praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory, Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? It's good to see you all. If you're visiting, we're glad that you're with us today. We hope you'll stick around after service so we can get to know you a little better. We do have a little bit of special programming today. It is Senior Sunday. Uh, we get to celebrate the graduation of our 2023 seniors today. So it's something we're excited about here at Western Hills. We have seven, two who couldn't be with us today, Aiden Cole and Lily Moore, uh, but we have five who are with us today and we're excited to share a little bit about what they have going on and, and what's coming next. So, seniors and families of seniors, when I call you and you see your picture up on the slide, go ahead and come up here and Jeff, one of our elders, is going to give you a Bible and then we're going to get a picture of you and then I'm going to make you wait up here uh, so we can get a picture of all of you at the end. Sound good? All right, now, friends and family... and family. Thanks, Dean. You have an important job here. Not all of you are going to get to rejoice and be glad with the seniors at each of their celebrations. So what that means is when I call them up at the end of me sharing what all they have going on, I really want you to cheer. Not a little golf clap at the end, okay? Maybe even a whoop or two. Is that okay? Can we do that? Okay, so we're going to be excited for each of these families as they come up. Are we good? Can we do that? All right, first up. Alex Rodriguez. <laughs> Alex will be graduating from MacArthur High School. He's been active in the student council, chess, esports, leadership, and theater, and I'll add leading worship excellently here at Western Hills. Um, he will be attending Oklahoma City University for musical theater. In five years, Alex would like to be a professional performer making a sustainable living based solely on the money he earns through his performances, whether they be live theater or some other venue. Everyone, please give one more round of applause for Alex. Good job, everyone. <clears throat> Next, we have Alyssa White. Alyssa will be graduating from Cash High School, has been active in theater, singing, and counseling at Camp OC. After she graduates, she'll be continuing to work, already employed. Congratulations, and nicely done. Uh, while she figures out what she'd like to do next, everyone please give Alyssa and her family a big round of applause. <laughs> next up, we have Carter Croft. Carter will be graduating from Elgin High School, is an excellent bowler, I think that runs in the family, uh, is on the academic team, uh, on the chess club, and on student council. He will be attending Oklahoma Christian University on a bowling scholarship, and will be studying mechanical engineering. Please give a big round of applause to Carter and his family. Next up we have Matthew Teal. Come on up, Matthew. Matthew will be graduating from Elgin High School. Matthew enjoys gaming, has a green thumb, uh, loves his pets, and enjoys cooking. Matthew plans to work in the photography and graphic design space after graduating. Please give Matthew and his family a big round of applause.
Next, we have Ryan Moore. Ryan will be graduating from MacArthur High School. He enjoys welding, fishing, cars, and reading, and is planning on attending Votech for welding finishing school after graduation, so he can be a pipeline or structural welder. He was also just accepted, big news here, into the Oklahoma Highway Patrol Cadet Lawman Academy. Congrats and good luck. One more round of applause, as needed. Yep, one more, here we go. Thank you all for your help rejoicing with these families. Uh, families, if you could come kind of in the middle here, Mark's gonna take a picture, and then we'll have one more big round of applause, and then Jeff is gonna give us a closing prayer. Sound good? All right. I guess I can sit down. We'll have a prayer for him anyway. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for blessing us with the lives of our graduating seniors. Watch over them as they move into the next phase of their lives. This is a big moment in time for them. So help them to realize that they'll make their own decisions even more now decisions that will steer them in what they will do in life. May they be influenced by what they have learned from your holy word and help them to apply these principles to the decisions down the road. We ask for special blessings for Liliana Amore, Aiden Cole, Carter Croft, Ryan Moore, Alex Rodriguez, Matthew Teal, and Alyssa White. Bless their families as they encourage them to the next new phase of their life. May these seniors who hope in you renew their strength. May they soar on wings like eagles. May they run and not grow weary. And may they walk and not get tired. Bless them all through the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, a famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert, crying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion till salvation comes. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant, David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in your world, and we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, 
and doubt of Zion till salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. So lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether loving, altogether worthy, Altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created. All for our sake became poor. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to be. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether loving, altogether worthy, Altogether wonderful to me. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. my soul, my Savior God 
second chapter. The reason I chose this particular scripture, it uh, gives us some goals as Christians as to what we should become as imitators of Christ. It also shows what Jesus did in an, in an unselfish way to leave heaven and become flesh. Let's, let's read through this. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition of vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude 
should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, who being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant he being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God highly exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. If you would, if you would uh, bow with me. Holy God, we're thankful for this opportunity to remember our Lord Jesus, what he has done for us. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, partake of these emblems that represent his body and his blood. Let us do this memorial in a pleasing manner to you. Let us partake of this bread, which is his body in a way pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. We know that Jesus was unselfish and he did that not because he had something to prove he was already the son of God but he gave of himself that we might live with him that we might be cleansed daily that we might because of his humility follow after him and his attributes and live a life of service like he lived. Let us remember at this time his blood. Holy God, we're thankful for the blood of your son that cleanses us daily, washes our sin, puts us in a loving relationship with you because of of that cleansing. Help us, Father, to celebrate this this great love that was given in giving your Son. Help us to remember this blood and what it does for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We use this opportunity every Sunday morning to give as we have received with with, uh, love to God and for his, what he's done for us. And we just want to pray together and thank God for our blessings. Holy God, we're thankful for the opportunity to have those things that we can give to others. Help us to be better servants as Jesus was, 
Help us to be unselfish. Help us to give so that others might have the opportunity to know you and to know your son and receive his cleansing. Let us give in a joyful way and may you bless our offering today. In Jesus' name, amen. O oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, teach your children to stop the fighting, start uniting.
And the church said? Amen. You know, Zach did a great job introducing all those seniors and their families. <laughs> and I was kind of jealous, but I was like, uh, maybe he should introduce, here's Harley. <laughs> and that's what I get is a bunch of laughter, no clapping, right? Anyway, but God is good. He did a great job. There, here's Harley. There you go. Very good. It was great, man. It's good to see that. Uh, good to see uh, all of them up here. And we're so proud of all of them. And we just are, are blessed. We are really, really blessed here at Western Hills. We've been, Don and I have been watching this, these kids come through here for 30 years now. And um, it's just amazing um, the, the blessing that comes from that. And, you know, God has great plans for all of you. Um, yeah, I, I, I know you have a thought that's going on in your mind of what you want to be or would like to be, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today as well. But uh, again, just thank you all for being here and thank all the seniors for their hard work as well. A father and a son, they were going down the road doing a scrabble road or whatever, and the father noticed this watermelon patch, and you know, it's just kind of tempting, so he decided to pull off the road up the ways a little bit, and he ran over the field, and he told his son, he said, you stay here and watch keep guard and I'm going to go over and get a watermelon so I don't know if you've ever done that before I'm kind of Donna's guilty of it I'm sure but anyway so uh so he ran over to the watermelon patch got the watermelon comes back over and just before he crosses the road he yells out to his son and he says son look both ways look both ways and the son said something was very important he said but dad shouldn't we look up too I think sometimes that's what we forget to do we kind of look both ways down here instead of looking up. And God has called us to look up to Him. And the uplook will improve your outlook. And so I would say to all the seniors and to all of us here today, just simply is keep looking up. Keep looking up. The mind. I want to talk about that. Keep this in mind. I had no idea what I was going to title this message this week, but anyway, came up with this. Keep this in mind, nonetheless. The mind is like a clock, someone said. It's constantly running down, grinding down, and it has to be wound up daily with good thoughts. Coming off of maybe Stan's class this morning that we had, and those thoughts and how we put those things into our mind each day and how we deal with that in our lives. I'm going to give you three simple things today. I'm not going to keep you very long, and, um, but I want to give you three simple things that I think to keep in mind on your journey with God. It doesn't matter if you're a senior that's graduating from high school. It doesn't matter if you are this, if you will, this seasoned Christian, been around for a long time. I want you to know that today that God wants you to live a godly life. The world needs now more than ever, more than ever before, it's certainly in our time, more than ever before in our time that God needs God's people, His people, to live godly lives for the example that the world needs around us. So number one is to, so keep your mind on this, you must be willing to accept. Understand this is very important in your life for all of us to do this, but you must be willing to accept what it is that he has selected you for in each season of your life. In each season of your life. So whether you're the senior that's about to head off to college or to workforce or whatever it might be, or you're that retired person that's doing something, you have to be willing to accept what it is that God has for you in your life in this season of your life. If you're not willing to accept what God has for your life, you can just stay home, stay in your mom's basement, as they would say, and play video games until you're 25, and one day wake up and say, Ah, oh, I guess i got to do something. God has something for your life at the age that you are. But you can also re uh, go fast forward to the retirement age, which I am, and it doesn't mean I'm ready to retire yet, so don't clap. But anyway, and in, in, in that process, you have to be willing to say, when I retire from something, Brad, congratulations, 43 years of service in our military, just retired this week. Give him a round of applause. And, and, and so I say that, but the, when you retire, you still have to find something to do. If not, it'll catch up with you real quick. I remember working for Ford Motor Company in 1976, right out of high school, and I remember one of the gentlemen there was there over 40 years, and, and uh, it was amazing. I mean, he was just this hard worker, and he worked there the whole time that I was there, except for about six months before I left there. And, um, 
Anyway, long story short, you know, they give you a watch and they congratulate you for it. And that afternoon, he went home, took a shower, and died of a heart attack. But I say that to say this, because we don't know the time, but God gives us something in every season, and you have to be willing to accept what it is that he has for your life, or life has lost its meaning. And God's not done with you yet just because you're retired. Please understand that. Somebody needs to know that. Can I have an amen? amen? All right, all right. Now, if God's selections are always right, and they are, give me an amen. amen. So God's selections are always right. You have to be sensitive enough in your spirit to his call in your life to be willing to accept whatever he selects you to do. There's the struggle we have. is doing what God has called us to do while we're here. He calls you into his kingdom for a purpose, for a reason, and he will show that to you in your life. The scripture there says in John 15, that's what Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Just that one sentence is powerful in your life. You realize that God chose you before the foundations of the world. He, didn't, he, he knew that the year that you would be born. He knew the year that you're going to leave this planet and go to be with him if you, if you have accepted his son as Bob led us earlier. He knows all things. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what's going to come in your life. He knows what these seniors are going to do at the age of 25, 35, and yes, beyond. God knows all things. God chose you for the right season, and that season is now. I believe that with my heart. Knowing that God has chosen you to do something changes your life, or at least it should change your life. That God, the creator of all living things, chose me and, cho and chooses something for me to do for his kingdom to give him glory and praise. The question is, will we find it? Will we discover it? Will we even search for it? Because scripture says if you search for it as you would silver and gold, you will find it. And so you sh we should all search, what is it, God, that you have for me in this season of my life? Because you have a purpose for my life. In 1 Peter, it says that we are chosen people, a royal priesthood, one of Phil Kennedy's favorite verses there, I think. That's what God thinks of you. This royal family that's getting to all this stuff that's going on this weekend and all the entourage and everything, that's a king that someone might appoint here on earth and whatever that is, that is. But I want to tell you that the king of kings chose you to be a part of his wonderful family. You can't get better than that. That's why you should rejoice and be glad. It's because God, the king of kings, says, I want you in my kingdom. And when you, when you accept that into your life, you can know that God loves me that much that he wants not only for me to be with him in heaven someday, but he wants and has something for me to do in his kingdom here on earth. Give me an amen. amen. Yet oftentimes we try to do what we want to do, and then we ask God to join us. You ever, you ever do that? Do what you want to do? Because that's what we normally do is we do what we want to do. And then, then we somehow try to say, God, now would you please join me in this? Because if you join me in this, then everybody will know it's from you. Instead of the opposite way around where God is saying, if you'll just let me, if you'll just stay close to me, I will show you what it is that you are to be and, how you, and what you can become. There is a place where you want to be. I have that as a title. In a class, if I do uh, talk to young people, I'll tell, tell them that. I will say there is a place that you want to be. And today I will tell you all the same thing. There's a place that you want to be right now. Don't say other than church, but the, 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 you, there's a place that you want to be in life. That's a natural thing for us to be. I would just like to be here. This is what I would like to have. This is what I would like to... And we fill in all the blanks. Well, I wanna hear to, I'm here to tell you today that there is a place where God wants you to be. And if your desire is to be where God wants you to be, there are great things for you to come. I promise you, because all good and perfect gifts come from God. Give me another amen. I know many people have done this, and perhaps you know some as well. People that thought that they wanted something, then when they got something, they didn't really want it. Anybody but me. huh? Uh, notice my wife didn't say amen to that, okay? Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Phew, got through another one but you know it, and the reason why I say that is because sometimes what we want and then when we get it we realize mm, it wasn't all I was expecting in life I know a person who went to school wanted to be a teacher 
wanted to be a teacher, went to school, made the great grades, all those things, not a problem. He still had that desire to be a teacher. He got all the grades and all that. He even was able to get the job that he wanted at the school that he wanted. He was just on fire, fire about teaching. He taught two weeks, walked in and said, I quit. <laughs> two weeks, not what he expected in life. Because sometimes the things that we want are not the things that God wants for us. And so if we seek God first, God will lead us to what He wants for us. Don't be like me. Don't wait 11 years to give in. I was very stubborn. For those 11 years that God had called me to preach, I said, you got, you got the wrong number. You got the wrong guy. You just, there's no way. I have a reading problem. I can't do that very good. I can't quote the verses that all the preachers that I knew in life that could. I just, I'm not going to be able to do that. I don't like standing before people. I don't like, I just, and I came up with every excuse there was to run from what God had called me to do. But until that day, when I was on my, if you will, my green John Deere tractor riding mower, mowing that lawn, and those lanes looked just like that, and I was crushed in my spirit, and I finally said, I've had enough. Of serving me I'm in and yes for my wife and I it was a scary adventure that we took and yes it was uh, it, it, we didn't know what it was going to be I was secure with the post office and I had the retirement ready and and all those things and man it's gonna be great and all of that and when we gave it all up it's pretty scary out there but our focus was God and God gave me a godly woman to stand beside me and say, this is what God has called you to do. You're doing it. And I praise God for that in my life. I'm, I'm a firm believer that much time, heartache, and finances can be saved if one seeks God before major decisions in their life. Because we can work and try to work it all through and work it all through. We look back and we took all that time, all that energy, and all that money into that. And then we realize it's just not what God wanted. Seek God first. Resisting the Spirit's movement in your life can cost you greatly. Many Christians miss out. Don't be one. When I talk about moving in our lives, God moving in our lives, you must understand or please understand that when I say that, it takes being sensitive in our spirit to God. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 4, do not grieve the Holy Spirit that lives within you. The message translation says it well for today's message. It says don't grieve God, don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life. You see, when God saves you, when God forgives you of your sins and you receive him and, you do, and you're baptized, God takes away your sins, but he, he, he does something. He doesn't take something out of you and not put something back because Scripture says if you take the bad out and you do nothing with that, only worse things will come. And so God says, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all that bad stuff out, which is your sin. Praise God. Amen. He takes all the sin out, and then he says, I'm going to take me, I'm going to take me, the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to put him right inside of you so that you can walk with me and you can talk with me and you can know that you are mine always, and I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Somebody's got to say amen. amen. This is the most intimate part of us, and oftentimes we even fail to even give him any glory for it because we take it for granted. Many Christians, some Christians, I should probably say, I would hope there would be a very small number. I would hope that it would be no, a zero, but I know of some, because some many have told me. Some don't believe that the Spirit of God moves within them in their lives. And it grieves the Spirit of God. It grieves God when that's not happening in their life. So they miss out on all, all, the, all the, the things that God has for them, the direction of life, or, or even the conviction of, of the sin that you're in. He will convict you of it. He will say, hey, hey, what are you doing there? You're not supposed to be looking at that stuff. Oh, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Please forgive me. Okay, let's get back on track. That's what God does for us. He will show you the job to take, the woman or the man to marry. He will show you in your life if you allow him to do that in your life. 
And then others of us, we become so busy that we become reliant on self or the, the knowledge of the world as though we can see what's happening there. What we do, oftentimes do that, and we become weak and we forget that we have give, been given something extraordinary from God. Extraordinary from God. If we would just be receptive to it, be willing to accept what he has selected you for. Number two would be, keep in mind, don't make God more complicated than he is. I used that not too long ago in a statement. I looked it up and I just want to reinsert uh, that today because I think that's what we do sometimes. Don't make God more complicated than he is. To live a God in life, you and make God, if you make God more complicated than he is, you know what will happen to your life? You will run yourself ragged. And you will eventually become judgmental, angry, and exhausted, if not all three. Now, I am not saying that God is, uh, we're on the level of God. And I'm not saying, because in Isaiah it tells us in 55, it tells us that his ways and our ways are light years apart. I understand that. It is, that is true. You are not God, you will not be God. But one thing for sure, you are called a Christian, a child of God. And if God says you are a child of God, then we should, we should respond as a child of God. And it must be attainable for us to reach some of the qualities of the God that we serve. People should see Christ living in us. Don't make him more complicated than he is. If any of you lacks wisdom, he goes on to say, you, and, and James there, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously, go ahead with the scripture, to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. God wants to give something to you. God wants to get it to you. God wants to get his wisdom to you and the decisions that you make in your life. And for these seniors, that's what we pray over you. We pray that you seek God. Why? Because we know God's got great plans for you. And that he wants to give you something. And everything that God wants to get to you, remember that it's always good. It may not be easy in your eyes, but it's always good because it's from God the Father. The devil always wants everything to be complicated and confusing. Do you know that? Do you know why he wants the, the world to stay confused and, 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 and complicated? It's because it divides everything. And Satan is alive and well out there, my friend, and he wants to divide us, and he does that by complicating things and confusing things. Well, this will be all right, don't you think? Oh, this will be okay. This is why we have the Word of God, because we can stand on it, because it's a firm foundation. Because he wants to keep you in the bondage of sin. That's what Satan's response, or that's what his... Um, that's what his goal is in our lives. Keep in mind what God wants you to know. He does not make you, he does not make it complicated. He does not hide it from you. God does not hide things from you. But if you seek God, that you can reveal, or he will reveal to you the things he wants for your life. Some people say, well, I don't know what God wants in my life. When, when's the last time you sought God out? Well, I asked him the other day, but he never said anything, so I just moved on from it. It's seeking his word. It's looking at his word because his word is living and active. It can change your life. It can give you direction in life. How it is. Ask someone else that's maybe a few years older than you that seems to be walking with the Lord. Ask them, say, hey, can you help me with this? I'm trying to seek this. Get some prayer partners. Let them pray for you and with you and see how God moves through all of those things. God has given us a great, big, wonderful family. We are family, as Zach said earlier. We are family, and we need each other. We need to talk to each other. We need to say, you know, I'm really contemplating this in my life. Would you pray for me and over me in this area so that God would give me the direction, a way to go, not just my ways, but his ways in my life. But we can make it pretty complicated, I'm here to tell you. God is not trying to hide something from you. Look at this one right here. Someone needs to hear this verse. I wrote this one in yesterday when I came here. Did a little more studying. And, and this, this one is, it, it's not complicated. Listen, listen. If, if you're not a child of God, just listen to this. It says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you're, you profess your faith and are saved. That's not too complicated. 
See, God doesn't say you got to jump through 45 different hoops. You got to give all this. You got to do all that. You got to have this. Got to no. What God wants is your heart. And God says, if you will just do this, do you believe that that Jesus is Lord? Have you said it out loud? Have you said it loud in your spirit? Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. I want you to guide me and direct me. You see, everybody wants a Savior, but not everybody wants a Lord. You see, we all want to go to heaven when it's all done and said and done. Amen? But do you really want a Lord of your life? That's here. That's now. And what does that mean? It means that Lord is going to give you direction. He's going to give you assignments. But he's going to give you the power to be able to accomplish it in your life. Always remember, God is not trying to withhold something from you. He is trying to reveal himself to you. James says, come near to God and he will come near to you. When's the last time you crawled up in God's lap and said, Daddy, Daddy, I just love you. Just to do that. Our great-grandson turned one years old this uh, Friday, I believe it was. We had a uh, party yesterday. And it was the first time, and it's not like I don't hold the babies, you know that. I love kids. But it was the first time that I was able to put him to sleep in my arms. And all the ladies go, oh. But to me, that was one of the most precious things that I was able to do. He trusted me. He just laid there and he made them little. And there's nothing more beautiful, I think, than a baby taking a bottle and going to sleep in your arms. And you finally pull that. Mothers, you know this. Dads, you may not, but you probably, some of you do. Do you change diapers too? I do. And, and when you pull a little bottle out of their mouth, their mouth is still... <laughs> so sweet. So innocent. Total trust. Sound asleep. God wants that with us. Screw up on his lap. Go sleep. My brother Roger over here, he, he used to tell me when we do a prayer class together, he said, man, sometimes I feel guilty. I remember this years ago. He said, sometimes I feel guilty. I'll be going to bed and I'm praying and I fall asleep without saying amen. Anybody but Roger ever do that? Well, it's okay if you wake up in the morning. I told him, I said, it's okay when you wake up in the morning, you say amen. <laughs> but what a wonderful way to fall asleep. In the arms of the Lord, just trust in Him. God wants you to know Him, but if you're not open to receive Him, He can live right next door and you won't even know His name. Keep in mind, there's an enemy out there. Somebody has to tell you that. See, it's, it's all sounds, but you've got to know the truth. And the truth is, there's an enemy out there. And he will do everything he can. Again, I jotted this in yesterday. He will do everything that he can to get you to listen to everything else or everyone else except for the truth. And sometimes Satan turns his music up so loud that you can't hear anything else. And it gets so loud that you can't hear anything else. And if you're not careful and in tune with God, you will begin to be swayed into believing the lie in place of the truth. That's how loud he gets his music. But always remember this. And keep this in mind. A lie is just as easy to believe as the truth. So know the truth to begin with. And when the lie shows up, you'll be able to detect it. That's important in your life. You know, they tell us that the FBI, when they search, search for counterfeit money, they don't, they don't look at the counterfeit much. They pull out the real McCoy. They pull out the real dollar bill or the 20 or the 100 or whatever it happens to be. And they look at that and they study it the most. And the reason why they study it the most is because then when the false one comes along, the counterfeit, it's very easy to detect. You stick with the truth and you'll know when it's false. Young people, you need to know that. This is the truth. Somebody's going to tell you in your school or in your world that you're going to, they're going to tell you, oh, that really doesn't matter. That is a lie because you've been told the truth. It's the truth. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you free from being deceived 
and to believe in a lie. It's the way it works. So make sure you're listening to God because when His music's playing, it's always rewarding. Always. Number three, and we're finished. This one's elementary, but you got to be ready. We used to sing, got to be ready when He calls my name, got to be ready when He calls my name someday. You got to be ready. God is a God that can deliver something to you in an instant. If you're not ready, you can miss out. All things are possible with God. We know the scripture says you just have to believe that and then be ready when he shows up in your life because he can change your life in an instant. There's a plant called the Chinese bamboo. It's a, they plant the seed and I don't know if you know much about it, but anyway, you plant the seed, I'm told, and, and you, they fertilize and water it for the first year. Nothing happens. It doesn't even break the ground. I mean, what would you do? You'd probably plow it up. That seed's no good. Second year, they water it and fertilize it, nothing. Third year, water, fertilize it, nothing. Fourth year, nothing. Fifth year, nothing. And sometimes, even to the sixth year, nothing happens. I mean, nothing comes out of the ground. And all of a sudden, bam! Sprouts up just a little bit. And they say that this Chinese bamboo tree can grow to upwards of 90 feet in six short weeks. In some cases, it's been filmed where it's grown 39 inches in one single hour. It seems in, to be incredibly, it just seems to be at all lost. It just seems that nothing's going to happen, but suddenly it explodes out of the ground. Why do I say that? I will not dare tell you that God will work in your life on that, in that way every single time. But I do know this. He's God and I'll let him be God and how he chooses to be God. I can promise you this, however. He can do whatever he chooses to do in your life. And I believe he wants to do something incredibly wonderful in your life. In an instance, he can do something for you that can change your life forever. It can change your life forever. It may look like nothing's happening in your life. You may say, I've been to church, I've said the prayers, I've given the money, I've done this and I've done that and I've tried and I've worked and I've worked hard and I've studied His Word and all that nothing seems to happen. Don't you dare, don't you dare give up. Because God is faithful. What you think may not be happening. I want to tell you today that God's movement is always at work. Even when it seems as though He's very silent. God's moving. He's working. Be ready in life. As the newsboys sing the song, God's not dead, He's surely alive. On the second day, they thought it was over. It's done. The third day, they even thought at the beginning, it's gone, let's just go back to our living. It's done. But God said, God said, come out of that grave. And because of that truth, that truth, you and I, you and I have an opportunity to come to know our Heavenly Father that loved us so much that He would give His Son to die on the cross, to go to that grave, to to defeat hell on our behalf so that we wouldn't have to go there. Jesus ought to get praise in this house. I'm here to tell you. It's exactly right. Listen, if you think God is, if you think of God as He's dead, then let me tell you what happens. You can only have a thought or a memory of Him. That's it, as far as it goes. But if you believe that God is alive, a relationship can be born and all things are possible. You keep doing right and be ready. He will show up because He is faithful. Psalms tells us that right there. Listen, as I say this last paragraph. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or perhaps today you've just found yourself falling weak. Because see, as Christians, we got to admit that we get weak sometimes. I want to tell you, I've fallen many times. I just get weak. And you do that by multiple things in your life. You can be just busy in life, things in life. Kids can drive you this, or uh, spouses, you know, whatever. And there's just bills and work and everything else. And you can become weak. 
in your walk with God, your journey with God. And I know I'm not the only one that's ever felt that way. So if you're not a child of God, and if you have fallen weak in your walk with Him, you may find it surprising that He wants to change that in your life this very moment. Right now, He wants to change that. How? I promise you that He will do it in an instant. How does that work? He will take you from lost to saved in an instant. That's how good our God is. From hurt to healed, from sorrow to joy, from anxiety to peace. You see, God, God's always right. He's always right. And right now, while His Spirit is still sensitive, listen. Just listen to Him. Is He calling you? Don't you hesitate. You can come. So Thank you.